Oscar's performance as Lawrence of Arabia in 1962 and got an Academy Award nomination. Since then, he has received five other Academy Award nominations and has starred on Broadway as well as on the silver screen. He's written an autobiography, Lottering with Intent, and we're pleased to have him here to talk about this and many other things. Welcome. Nice to have you here. <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> well done, you think? Yeah. <laughs> Better, though, you'd say, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, let me just talk a little bit about this before we move along here. Uh, a lot of the intent, uh, a, a lot of this book is about Adolf Hitler, um, who seems to, this is your life from zero to 21 here, who seems to have had some kind of, I mean, why does he occupy so much space? He occupied too much space of my young life. Yeah. The fear of him. And indeed, the, the too much space of many millions of young lives. Yeah. But he ended many millions of young lives. Yeah. It's a great shadow over my childhood. Why? Because... We... Primarily because I was taken to a newsreel. Yeah. And we had to think of a news cinema. They were at railway stations. And they were perfect for children. They lasted an hour. To be a newsreel, then the Three Stooges, Popeye, Donald Duck, the travelogue, yeah. and it was a little, little paradise of mine. I used to go with my mother or father. When I was about four or five, I was watching, and on came Hitler, and he scared me. Yeah. To the point where I made my father or mother make sure that he wouldn't be appearing on the program, or I wouldn't go. What did you think of Churchill? A warrior of Marlborough's kin <laughs> came the hour. Of the Duke of Marlborough. Came the man. I have immense respect, affection, and admiration for him. That's what I think of Churchill. How about his command of language? Brilliant. Can you imagine what it was like to sit in, with the dread of German invasion, with the dread of the bombs, yeah already occupying France. 20 miles away. Right. And that voice. I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. Powerful. John F. Kennedy said he mobilized the English language and saved a nation. Mm. What does it mean to you to be Irish? It's almost the center of my being. How so? I can understand and reflect and indeed Everything I think of is colored by its history, by its literature, by its people, by its, by its geography. When the war ended, I went to Kerry, County Kerry, in 1946. I had not been to Ireland since I was an infant. I hadn't seen it since before 1939. And they were strange years, the war years from seven to 13, you can imagine. And I was a bit of a misfit, a bit of an odd man out. But I went into Kerry with my friend, Father Leo Walsh, and it all clicked. I wasn't different at all. <laughs> the other ones here were very, very, very strange. Yeah? yeah. Your father was a gambler, mm. but you loved it principal influence on your life. Hmm. What was it he had that so... Love, humor, strength, fortitude, yeah. even in great distress, never lost it. Never lost his poise, never lost his, his kindness, yeah. and he... tangible affection, yeah. very important. Did he like Lawrence? He loved it. <laughs> <laughs> my, my boy. Son. That's my son. son. Is that what he said? My son. Did you take him to the premiere? 
No, he went by himself. Why? Just wanted to be alone. He would often turn up, never tell me he'd be coming. Went to a premiere or of a film or at the theater yes, when, when you were at the Royal Academy or wherever? Yeah, often. Yeah. Sit on the front row. But he wanted you, proud of you as an actor? Very much. Yeah. He said to me, he saw my first play when I was a first, when I was first became a professional. He looked at me with strange eyes and said, you work hard. <laughs> You're a journalist. You, you thought about being a journalist. <laughs> what happened? I mean, people like me think journalism is a great and noble craft. People like me thought that he'd rather be the person talked about than, 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 <laughs> than the person written about than, than do the writing. You thought it would, you preferred to be mm. written about rather yep. than be a writer. Yeah. You, Bill Buckley has an idea that either you're in a, that, that in life you choose to either be an actor or an observer. Mm -hmm. You know, you're an actor or observer. Mm -hmm. He's a clever man. Yeah. And you chose to be an, an actor. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, mm -hmm. an actor mm -hmm. could be a politician mm -hmm. or an architect or mm -hmm. whatever rather than to write mm -hmm. criticism of architects or, or theater. And didn't your journalism, or your newspaper guy say to you, go back, because that's what you're... No. No. That was my choice. Choice, that's an interesting word. Yeah. I had an old uh, headmaster with whom I kept in touch for years and years and years. And he would give me a word to think about. Loyalty. Yeah. Think about for the week. And when I was about 30, I saw him, and he said, think of the word choice and take three months. Yeah. And you did? Mm. And you decided, and it impacted how? Choice is a, such an important word. How did you end up at the Royal Academy? I mean, I, I can't figure out how much is apocryphal and how much is the gospel. Gospel was I was toying with the idea of becoming an actor. Yeah. Um, went to London with a friend of mine who was toying with the idea of becoming a painter. <laughs> and we landed at Euston Station on a lorry, a truck. We'd hitched hiked. And we were walking to a men's hostel. And we passed the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. Yeah. And I thought, he said, well, I think they do <laughs> acting in there. Oh, there, that's where they, that's where they act. Right. You ought to try it, so I gave you. <laughs> Hello, I'm Peter O'Toole. How do you do? Yeah. And uh, one thing led to another. Well, was it that easy? You knock on the door and they say, come in, Mr. O'Toole, you're going to be one of the great actors of your time. And, no, you know, but I was lucky enough, I was lo looking at the bust of Bernard Shaw. Yeah. And the commissioner, a sergeant, joined me. And Shaw died two years earlier. He died the year I joined the Navy. Submarines. That's right. And I was telling my Shaw stories, and the sergeant was telling his Shaw stories. And we were chuckling. And along came the principal. And he wanted to know what we were laughing about. So I told him. And he asked me what I was doing, and I told him. And I said, is there any chance that you might consider me for this academy? And he told me how to go about doing it. And well, I'd pop into his office in a couple of days, in a few hours, which I did. Mm. And then I auditioned twice. And I was given a scholarship. Mm. What did, and how, how much of that was due to natural ability and how much of that was due to something else? Luck. Luck. Mind you, I did choose the right. Royal Academy. It was choose, the right We one. thought about choice for three months. Right. <laughs> that, was not, that was ten years yeah, later. Ten years later. Is it true, you went to see Sir Michael Redgrave yeah. in King Lear, mm -hmm. and it had what kind of impact? Huge. On? What was it about one performance by one actor in one Shakespearean play? The mightiest work, I think, one of man's great artifacts. You were talking of architects and musicians and whatever. Yeah. I think one of the greatest artifacts on earth is King Lear. I think that Michael's performance was one of the great interpretations of it. The whole production, the whole cast. 
it was a play which I didn't really know very well and received it the right way, not from the page, from the stage. Mm -hmm. Hit me very hard. It was a concatenation of extraordinary circumstances and coincidences. And, and did you stay? Did you linger? Did you go back and see? About Maybe. three months after that, I saw Sir Donald Wolfitt yeah. play it. Mighty. Volcano. And I was in, I was about, what, eight weeks in the profession, and then I was in it, playing Cornwall to Eric Porter's beer. So I was steeped in it, and remained steeped. Have you, are you as good as you wanted to be? Yeah. You are? Mm. So if, if you stopped acting today, you could say, I've done it. I've done it. Mm. Stage and film. Mm. Done it. Mm. No regrets. Didn't fool around too much, didn't drink too much, didn't play around too much, didn't... I came to act, and I've done it. No questions, no reservations, no doubts, nothing. You sure? That's pretty good. When you were an actor, Michael Caine told me that, that you two knew each other. Who else was among that group? You and Robert Caine? Robert Shaw. Robert Shaw. Ronald Fraser. Yeah. Kenji Takaki. Michael said that he was the last to make it. And I said, why? And he said, because he was uglier than the rest of you. Mm. Was he the last to make it? I thought Michael never stopped. He was... Make it as what? In, as in an actor. Oh, well, no, he was a very he good actor. He said you guys all made it before he did. No, he, that's Michael being diffident. Diffident? Yeah. yeah. No, no, he was, he was working constantly and improving and getting better and doing different things. No. Yeah. no. How was it to write this? I mean, this is only, I mean, when you write a book, a memoir, and it's only to age 21, a lot of stuff in here because you grew up in interesting times, you know, it was that great... Who said, may you live in exciting times. You know, Chinese live. proverb, right. curse. Curse. You've done that. Uh, are you, uh, how was it to do this? I mean, was it easy? Did you... Well, as our Chinese friend said, um, a journey of a thousand miles starts yeah, with the first, first step. step. Right. right. It was the first step that took the time. What, sitting down and doing it? No, just, just I, I sat down and it was rubbish. Rubbish. Yeah. Dishonest. Rubbish. So you had to come to grips with being honest? Yeah. Who made you do that? Me. You looked at it and said rubbish. Rubbish. Beneath me. Rubbish. Embarrassing. Mm. All that. Mm. Tone. Throw it away. Rubbish. Start over. Mm. On uh, com computer, typewriter, longhand. Pen. Pen. Yeah. Everybody... Um, thinks about you and a Lawrence. Hmm. Did you name your son Lorcan? Is that some derivative of Lawrence? No, I read in some trashy newspaper that that was the case. I, know. I read that too, and that's why I didn't know no, that. No, Lorcan is a very old Irish name. Yeah, it has nothing to do with Lawrence. No, it means, it means uh, ravening. Huh? What happened was the name Lorcan is a pagan name. Yeah. And when the Irish churches when the Catholic Church, after Catholic emancipation in 18, what, 29, there was suddenly a proliferation of churches all over Ireland, and indeed, every, they were scooping up, and Dublin scooped up its own saint. Yeah. And they had a Saint Lorcan from the 12th century. But they couldn't call him Lorcan because it turned out to be pagan. Now, the French had his bones, Lorcan, and they called him Laurent. So by a confusion in the 19th century, it became yeah. Lawrence. No, his name is Lorcan. What writer, what book has had the most influence on you? Shakespeare, obviously. Yeah. Um, uh, author? Yeah. George Eliot, perhaps. Mm. Evelyn Waugh. No, I'll tell you what. The, the, the one single book, one... When I was about 15, I read Martin Eden by Jack London. 
Jack London. Yeah. That book. It, it motivated you. It, mm. it, yeah. It's great to have you here. Slaughtering with Intent by Peter O'Toole. First, uh, what are, how many is going to be? Three, four? Three. Three. Have you sort of outlined it already? Mm. Yeah. Good to have you. Thank you very much.